Hello everyone, Eric from Teachers Talking Tech here. I want to show you some advanced seesaw tricks that you can use with your class. So for this, I'm going to be using a class that I set up called the Seesaw Presentation Class, which this is the first trick I'll show you actually. You can have up to 10 classes open at the same time with the free version. Um, so I have my classroom one, but then I also, for presentations or other things like that, I create a new class. And then I just use numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 99. So participants uh, can come in and they can grab uh, a little card that I give them. And it has their number on it. And then it also has a QR code that will link them to this class. So it's an easy way, if you're presenting Seesaw uh, to others, to get them engaged and involved. Okay, here's my next trick. So down the bottom here of all my students, you will see manage students. Okay, now I'm going to do something that I love doing in my own classroom, which is that I add a student and its name is reading. And I'll tell you why in a second. So the first thing I do is I add a little asterisk and then I will type reading. Another trick here is you can also use emojis if you have young kids to put an emoji maybe of a book or something like that to help them find this. Okay. Now the reason I put the asterisk here is because it will keep it at the top of the list. Okay. So I add it. Now here's the benefit of having this now. Let's say I have an assignment for my kids. When I post it, I can actually post it as if I was this student reading. Okay. So my kids can tap here and they can see what I've pl uh, placed under that student, but no parents see it. Okay. Now, let's just say that I post something. So I'm going to post a drawing as a teacher here. And then I'm going to say, yes, I am reading. I don't need to put it in any folders. And now it's been posted. Now, if another child logs on, they can use these three dots here and they can copy and edit my work. So this is my next trick for you, the copy and edit button. So your kids can tap the three buttons here and if they go down to uh, copy and edit, what it will do is it'll create a copy of what I made and now they can edit it. So for example, they could draw more on this. They could uh, just record their voice and explain this math problem. So this is a great trick for getting your kids uh, to do something that you've created. All right, the next trick that I'd like to show you is the edit people trick. If you have kids working in partnerships, or two or three or however many kids, edit people is a great way for them to tag more than one student. So let's say student one and two did this. After they're done, they can click on edit people. They can tag everyone involved. And now all those parents will be notified about the uh, same project that they shared. Right? Another trick I want to show you is with the three buttons, boy, there's a lot that goes on with these, is that your kids can also get a QR PDF. So after they've done a project, they can choose that and Seesaw will generate this cool page here. It'll have a picture of the project. It'll also have the child's name and picture or whatever their icon is up here in the corner. And then here's the QR code. So if other students, um, well actually let me go back, sorry. Then you click share and from there you can print this out. Other students can now uh, come down the hallway if you put these out in the hall. And when they tap up here, you see this little QR code. If the students tap there, it'll open the camera. And other students can scan that QR and watch that uh, post or look at that post from your student. Okay. All right. This takes me to the next trick, which is more about managing students. All right. So when you go down to manage students, Sorry, I went right past it here. Okay, manage students. You can change the icon to um, any of the 
uh, predetermined kind of seesaw icons, but you can also use a photo here. This is kind of cool. You can take a picture of the child and then use that as their icon. Okay, just be careful here though, because if you are going to use the blog feature or you're going to post these online, uh, just think about attaching that child's name to their picture. You might want uh, to think about not doing that. But another option you could have is you could have your kids draw an artistic um, representation of their face and then use that as their photo. For my reading folder, maybe I want to download a picture of a book from Google and use that as my photo for my icon. So that is another little trick here all about managing this. All right, the next trick I want to show you is a way to share video uh, or slideshows or things like that with your class. So when you make a video, um, let's say that you took a video of what you did in science and you wanted to share that video with your entire class so that they could add their own voice to it and tell what happened. So you would add the video to Seesaw. Your kids can tap these three buttons here and then they would select share item. One of the things that comes up when you do that is save to camera roll. So now your kids can take that project you made, download it to their own device, and they can then put it into Shadow Puppet EDU or some other app, and they could add their own voice to it to tell what happened. I love using this because we have older iPads, um, and so it's a quick way to share something with the kids where they can uh, then download it to their device and make changes. Now, just a few days ago, Seesaw added some awesome new features, and I'm going to show you those right now. So I'm going to use drawing again, and when I tap on the text tool down here, you will see that there is a text box and a blinking cursor. This is because Seesaw has added um, the ability to add labels. So I'm going to show you a couple ways you could use these. Uh, way number one is for word sorts. So a lot of people use word sorts, K5. Um, you can type out a word, then you can change the style. So for example, I could make this look a little more like a card, make it a little bigger. Okay, and then I tap again. So let's say I'm doing at and it, uh, word family there. There we go. And then I can start typing words. Okay, I'm only going to do a few, obviously. I don't want to make you sit through all this. <laughs> all right, let's do cat, kit. And let's do fat, fat and fit. How about that? Okay, now, obviously I want my kids to sort these. What I do is I just go ahead and stack them right on top of each other like this. Okay, then I go ahead and I would go ahead and, and share it with them under one of my little names here, like I showed you how to make. And there it is. So now when my kids log on, they can go to the reading folder, okay, is what I call it, where it's really a reading person. And then they tap the three buttons and they click copy and edit. And now my kids can edit this. How they do that is they tap on the T, click on add label. Rather than add a label, they just tap on the keyboard to get rid of it. And now they can manipulate these. Okay. Then when they are done manipulating them, they can go ahead and they can um, turn it back into me. Okay. Now the next thing that they added is to go along with a pencil. Once you hit record, you're gonna see a little arrow come up. This arrow allows you to point and explain things without drawing on your work. Another thing that you can use Seesaw for is for blended learning. It's an easy way to share video with your children. So how I use this is you can either record a live video of yourself or you can use an app such as Viddle which I love, or Edgy Creations, okay? And so let's say that I had a video that I created, okay? And I wanted to share it with the kids. So here's a video that I created, all right? 
and I talk and draw or whatever I do on it, most of these apps will actually let you send directly to Seesaw. So I can send this directly to Seesaw, and I have these little names again that I showed you. I can just say, oh yeah, this is reading, put it in there, it'll upload. Now when my children go to that item, so let me switch back here to Seesaw. Okay, there it is. They can easily find it by tapping on reading. Now they can press play and watch that video and follow along. I love this as a way to quickly share video with kids and then I can erase it from Seesaw later or have my own system of having them all on um, here for my kids to watch. So a great way to share blended learning uh, activities or videos with your kids. Also, I know teachers that use it uh, to give directions for stations or centers for their kids as well. All right, the next uh, few tricks I'm going to show you are for Seesaw Plus users or Seesaw for Schools users, which are both paid subscriptions. Uh, you can go on Seesaw.me to learn more about these, but I think that, that it's well worth the money. You'll see a few new buttons come up here. And the first is a private teacher comment button. So you can use, leave a voice comment or write a private note. Either way, the child and the parents do not hear or see these. Okay. The second thing is there's a skills button. What this allows you to do is you can create skills for your class, and then you can tag this post with those skills. So let's say that I wanted to tag it uh, this with uh, counts by tens and counts by fives to 100. I can not only score those, uh, but score multiple uh, skills for one post. The um, as you change, they change colors, so you can kind of, and you'll see why in a minute. So let me just do that. I hit the check mark, and I went through and I did that for multiple posts here. And so now that I did those, I can go up here and I can click on skills view. Whoops, not calendar view, skills view. And it gives me a handy little spreadsheet here where I can at a glance see all of my children and how they did on those assessed skills. This is really cool because instead of assessing all over two week period or things like that, you can actually assess as your semester or trimester goes on and easily see who has done the assessment and who hasn't and see how they did on them. One more feature here that comes along with this is uh, a private folder. A lot of teachers uh, have asked for this feature, which is I want to assess something, but I don't want the parents to see it. I want it to be private. Um, that only I see it. So if your children does this assessment, you can add to your private teacher folder. Okay. And you'll see it right there. It says it's in that folder, and now parents cannot see that uh, post. So I can go ahead and approve it like normal, but it just won't be sent to the parent. Then if I come up here to the folder, I can say I only want to see things in my private teacher's folder, and you could further tag them with reading or math to make them easier to find. So those are some very cool features that come with Seesaw Plus or Seesaw for Schools. They do have a free trial for three months if you want to just try these out. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks. I hope that they're useful for you. If you have more questions, you can always email me at teacherstalkintech at gmail.com. You can go to our Facebook page, search for Teachers Talking Tech on Facebook, and drop us a message or a post, and we'd love to hear from you. All right, see ya.